Hello, this is Shavam Ghosh from Stratasys Boston, and this is the first of our video series about things you may not know your J750 could do. This episode, full color, full texture displacement mapping. And since I'm a fan of a certain HBO TV show, we're going to use that as our example today. And that's all the themes that I can use before we get lawyers involved. But seriously though, if you look at what's going on here, the dark blue parts of the ocean are flat and the white parts of the land are raised up out of the image. Now I didn't model all this in CAD, I didn't make all those little islands and, and mountains. And that's the real magic of displacement mapping. It lets you create very complex textured shapes with little time investment and little uh, manual investment. The computer does it for you automatically. So let's see what you'll need to get this done. You're going to have to start with some sort of picture, a JPEG or PNG, something high resolution. You're looking for something that has a high contrast between the dark areas and the light areas. Maps work really well for this, since the ocean is usually dark and you want that to be flat. That The land is usually lighter and you want that to be raised. Maps work really well. But if you want to do something like a leather texture, a brick texture, something like the bottom of a shoe sole, a golf ball, these are all things that are possible with displacement mapping. Second thing you'll need is some sort of 3D shape. I'm going to use a rectangle because I'm making just a simple coaster, but you could do this to spheres, more complex 3D shapes. Anything you can make in CAD, you can then displace the map later on. But the rectangle is definitely the easiest to start with. You'll also need some sort of displacement mapping software, Photoshop, Rhino. There's even rumors that SOLIDWORKS 2019 can do this. We're going to use Photoshop in this case because it's the cheapest, it's the easiest for most people to get, and it can do what we need on these simple shapes. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this in Photoshop. The ideas are the same in other softwares. And finally, you'll need a 3D printer. This could work on cheaper 3D printers, three color printers, or one color printers, or even FDM printers, but we're going to use a Stratasys J750 because the effect is best seen with six colors in full texture. So if you've got these four things, let's go into Photoshop and see how we begin. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to open up a new document of any size. And that, this is a normal 2D document like you always would work with in Photoshop. Now we're going to add a 3D element. So I'm going to go to my 3D menu and create a new layer from file. I'm going to grab that blank STL rectangle I had before. And now we've got a 3D shape in Photoshop. So this is actually pretty amazing that Photoshop can do this, but you'll see that's not the last of the 3D operations Photoshop can do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a two-dimensional colored texture on this flat shape. You do this by clicking on the diffuse map down here in the corner. Again, if you zoom in on your layers toolbar, at the top you'll see the name of your 3D layer that you just added, but you need to click underneath the diffuse just open up your UV map. So double click on the name of your part under your diffuse layer and you'll see your UV map open up. All right, so in Photoshop, I'm gonna double click on my diffuse layer and this is my UV map. This is how Photoshop unwraps my shape into something flat I can put textures on. So now the command is called file place embedded. I'm gonna to browse to my image of Westeros and now you can rotate it and place it like you normally would. So give me a second to get it to the right scale here. And we'll zoom in. You want it to fit inside the UV map lines, obviously. Once that looks pretty decent, hit the little checkbox at the very top okay, to accept it. That places your image, close this UV map and save it, and you'll see the changes take effect in your 3D model. Okay, so this is the first step, is putting a texture on your 3D model. Now, we're going to go to your 3D layer toolbar. So we were under our layers toolbar before, but now I want you to go to your 3D toolbar and single click on your texture map. 
We're going to single click on that to open up our properties toolbar for our texture map. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to single click on that properties toolbar for that texture map. And the property I want to show up is bump. I want to generate bumps from diffuse. Diffuse is the color of our Westeros map right now. I want to generate a bump map or a displacement map from that. If you click on this command, it'll take about 10-15 seconds and the end result should be a black and white image of the, the image you put on there. Okay, this is kind of giving you an example of what it would look like. As long as I can see some bumps and some Westeros, I'm okay. And this is that black and white image I was talking about. It's the same map of Westeros I put on there, except now made in black and white scale. We'll see how this is important later on if you want to adjust any of the valleys or mountains in our model, but for right now I'm going to leave this as it is. Again, that happened really quickly, so what we did is we clicked on the folder icon next to the bump map line, and the command we used was generate bumps from diffuse. What you should see now in your layer toolbar is the original diffuse layer, and those are your colors. But now added to that is a bump map layer. That's going to be your 3D displacement, or your bumps. You can click on either one to edit them. Now we're going to use a command I'm actually surprised that Photoshop has. Buried at the far bottom of the 3D menu is a command called 3D Print Settings. And that's what's actually going to make the displacement map from the elements we already have. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to go to 3D, 3D Print Settings, way down here at the bottom of the menu. Now it's going to open up on the right hand side. And you can see that I can actually choose different types of printers, which is crazy. I can choose MakerBots or MCore or ZCore. But in this case, we're going to choose a Stratasys J750. It's got some ability to scale the volume. I could scale it up to my print tray. But what I care about most is this tiny little line over here called Bump Maps. And it shows a zero for a min of zero and a max of one. The min is your dark color, so the darkest color will be flat in this case, and the lightest color, the white, will be up at a distance of 1. That's actually pretty good for my needs. You may have to edit it for yours, but I'm going to leave it from 0 to 1 right now. If you want your dark colors to actually go into your model, you could change the min to like negative 1 or negative 0.5, and it would actually um, displace down into your model. But we're going to leave it at 0 and 1. And then there's this tiny little button that I've been calling the Let's Go 3D Print button because uh, it has no other name. So I'm going to click on that and we should get a preview of what we're looking for. All right, and look at this. This is Photoshop generating a preview of what our model should look like when it's fully bump mapped. Now you can do all the normal things. You can zoom in and pan and see what's going on here. Let's really take a look at what's going on. Right? So look, the mountains are raised, the oceans are flat, and the border, which we got lucky, is also raised. That make that'll make for a pretty good coaster. So once you're once that looks good to you. You hit export and you can give it a file name. I'll call this Westeros Bump Mapped. And now in your print preparation tool, you can actually add that VRMO we just created. So I'm going to go grab my Westeros Bump Mapped. Notice it's 4.5 megabytes, much larger than the 2 kilobytes we started with. That's because Putting all these bump map textures, these three-dimensional textures on your model generates a lot of triangles. That's why the VRML, you'll see the size increase a lot. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to lay this flat. And look at that. We've got a beautiful, full-color, fully textured model ready for printing. Now I can go back at this stage and bump up the textures some more, I can make them flatter. You can do a lot of editing at this stage, but the one thing you want to make sure is that you actually see this texture in the preview. I'm going to put the uh, no bump model, I'm going to put the unbump mapped 
version next to it and you'll see the difference. Okay, so this is the unbump map version. Look how flat it looks on the tray versus our actual. Okay, so when you're previewing this on the tray, you want to make sure it looks like a three-dimensional topographic map or whatever you're trying to print versus a flat image on a tray, which is what's on the right. And let me show you one last thing you can do at this stage before you print. Let's say we wanted to edit what areas were raised and what areas were lowered in our final print. In this case, I'm going to try and put the actual ice wall in the north of Westeros on this map. So what you would do was double click on your bump map down in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And remember, any part that's white will stick out any part that's dark will be flat. So I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to make a white wall right here. Notice how white it is. It's really white. That means it's going to stick up a lot. Okay, so you can make changes to your model like this. For example, we found that when you're printing a lot of photographs of people, you have to darken their teeth because otherwise their teeth will stick up out of the plate. So in this case, whatever edits you're making, Go ahead and save. And we're going to go through that iteration again real quick. I'm going to go 3D, 3D print settings, generate the model. And on our GrabCAD print tray, it's going to look like this. I'm going to add my VRML file with the ice wall. Let's rotate it down. And take a look at this. This is a bit too dramatic, right? I made that part completely white, but see how far it sticks up. And if I printed it, you could actually feel the ice wall uh, in the final result. So do this wisely, edit your texture maps and your bump maps as needed to get the effect you want, but let's see what it looks like when this actually prints. So this is what it looks like when it's printed, and I'm actually really happy how it came out. The oceans are nice and flat, you can feel the different bumps of Westeros. We got lucky with the border, okay, it makes a nice natural border around the top, and you can really feel how big the uh, land up is in the north, all these ice glaciers on the north. Okay, so this is kind of what you can do. This has not been polished. This is off the machine, maybe a little water washing, but that's it. Okay, so this is not polished. But I'm really happy with how this came out, uh, and it didn't take a lot of work. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff you can do with Photoshop and a J750. Just to give you an overview of the entire process, remember you're starting with your CAD package, making your basic shapes and exporting IGES or STL files. And in Photoshop, remember that you're adding your texture to that 3D model using the bump mapping steps we showed. Then you're exporting a VRML to GrabCAD print and printing on the tray. Inside Photoshop, here are the steps, just for a summary. You're applying your 2D texture to your 3D model. This is the colors. Then you're generating your bump map from Diffuse, right? Diffuse is those colors we just added in step one. We're going to that menu, 3D print settings, the one where, way down at the bottom of the 3D print menu. And then finally, you're going to hit the Go button. Once you've set up your bump and command, that little Go button lets you save out as a VRML. Finally, thanks to David Yang and our Eden Prairie office for the idea. He got me thinking along these lines in the first place. And that's the end of Things You Didn't Know Your J750 Could Do, Episode 1. If you have any questions or ideas for later episodes, email me at stratuses.com because Stratasys always pays its debts. Or maybe 3D printing winter is coming? I don't know.